What's up guys, I'm Beatrix and you are probably here because you know the feeling when you, you've been practicing a piece for a long time and you can play it quite perfectly by parts, but when you try to play the whole piece all along, uh, you're, you feel tension in your hands, even pain, maybe after the half of the piece, maybe right before the end, but maybe right after a few bars. Fortunately, <laughs> there are many solutions for this problem and some of them will give you immediate results, but some of them need your patience and practice. In this video, I will give you five tips how to reduce stress and tension in your hands while you play the classical guitar. Some of them may seem quite obvious to you, maybe, uh, maybe not, I don't know, but I'm sure they are deserve to be mentioned. I think you've heard the first one at least a few times if you are a professionally trained classical musician, but my number five tip is to warm up properly. And I don't want to talk too much about this. I already covered pretty much everything I know about warm up in another video. And if you don't have a fun warm up routine, definitely check it out. I will put it in the descri description below. Wow, this was a hard word. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so check it out, it's fun, <laughs> I, I like that routine. But why do you need to warm up properly? Hello darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk with you again. Warm fingers and warm hands means you need to use less strength for, for the movements you make. It means your fingers are, are easily coordinatable, right? So you, you, can, you can move from A to B uh, with less strength, with less effort. That's what, you, that's what you want, basically. Tip number four is posture. <laughs> uh, in order to play effortlessly the classical guitar, you need a good posture. So what is a good posture then? Well, most of the guitarists uh, play with a footstool, something like this boy. Uh, and the most average position is something like um, an 8 to 12 centimeter high footstool under your left leg. And uh, the guitar should be perpendicular to the floor or with the floor. I don't know. Uh, and you have an around 45 degree neck, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so this is the average position. The problem with this is that you don't actually see what you are doing and what you are playing, especially, especially in left hand. So what most people do is to lean forward a bit in order to see their hands but you already have a raised left leg so leaning forward puts lots of uh, extra stress on your stomach because your organs are pressed so it's not good for your stomach not good for your lung either and also if you lean forward your spine will be curved and and that's also extra pressure on your on your shoulders and on your back but we still have to play and sometimes we do want to see what are we doing, right? Uh, so as a solution, I advise you to not lean forward, but to sit back a little. Just look at your left hand. If you want to see, if you want to see the fretboard, yes, you can see it if you lean forward, but it's just much more comfortable if you sit back a little. It's much better. Feels good in the in your shoulders. Uh, your spine is straight, and and everything feels so good and simple. Yeah. This is a bit dangerous because you really have to find the good angle. Be careful with it. But if you just just sit back just a little bit, it feels so so good and makes the playing much easier it feels awesome you have to find the good angle you have to find your 
own position. But what I definitely would avoid is to leaning forward. <sighs> that's bad, that's really bad. It's still a question if I recommend footstool or not, because uh, even if you sit back a little, it puts lots of extra tension on your lower back because you have this asymmetrical uh, posture when one of your legs is raised, the other one is on the floor. So it's, it's not good for your lower back. A good alternative could be the guitar lift. It's uh, basically a new type of guitar support. It's a few years old thing. <laughs> but uh, it's really nice, elegant, simple. Ah, you see the camera there? <laughs> okay, so it's a pretty new thing. It's really comfortable, simple and uh, adjustable. It has all the advantages you can you, you are looking for. Yeah, so I really recommend to, to get one. I will put a link into the description about it. All right, my next tip is to play quietly and you can use this tip uh, into your practice sessions and into your performances as well. Because when we want to play something fast or loud, we don't only press in your in our right hand <laughs> in our right hand, but we also uh, press in our left hand too. Because we just can't separate them perfectly and that's that's okay, that's normal. I uh, I also can separate my both hands perfectly. But if you practice quietly, you teach your body uh, how to use effort and how to push just as much as you need. I don't know if you can relate, but um, I had that many times when I was nervous on the stage and I just forgot to play pianissimo. <laughs> I forgot it exists. I keep playing fortissimo everything because everything seems so important and uh, that's how that's how the pain started i advise you to find those parts in every piece where you can can be really pianissimo and whenever you practice or whenever you are on the stage just ask yourself do i need to play this part so loud or can i play that part with less effort it will help you really you don't need to play loud all the time the next tip is quite similar to the previous one and is really a practice thing because you can do this uh, on the stage but the tip is to play slowly and when I ask you to play slowly I ask you to enjoy every movement you make every position changing between, between two notes and when you practice slowly try to find the shortest simplest way from one note to another because you don't need extra movements this is where you practiced how to how to optimize your movements and it feels so good and so simple and by not doing extra extra movements you free up lots of effort this is basically a left hand thing but works for for the right hand too you can minimize right hand movements as well there are plenty of unwanted extra movements we make tiny tiny movements we make during playing and sometimes we don't even notice them but by practicing slowly you just you just catch them <laughs> and you realize what you don't need to do these are really tiny details but will help you before we move forward to the next tip if you like this video if you think it's useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe on the channel helps me a lot. Okay, so my number one and best tip I can give you on this topic is the idea of the resting points. Let me explain this. When you play a piece, certainly you have tension in your hands, of course, obviously, but you don't need constant strength or constant pressure. The simplest maybe if I show you uh, the idea on a piece. Let's say I play Lagrima. And let's say I feel tension here. So what I do 
is that I try to find a, a phrasing point uh, right before right before the painful part. So let's say I, I feel pain here, so I don't need the rest here, but I need the rest before the pain. Fortunately, we have a musical phrasing point right before that. So what I'm doing is... Stop here, release the tension, and go. So did you catch what I what I did there? Yeah, it's against the music basically, but it's only for practice purposes. And time to time, if you practice like this, you will need less and less time to release the tension of, of your hands. And uh, after a few weeks or after a few months, let's say, you will need only just as much time to release the tension as uh, as the music desires, so it won't be against the musical uh, purpose. I hope you understand my meaning here. So basically this is the idea. Actually I draw little pillows into the scores wherever, wherever I need, need resting point. I, I just draw little pillows there and I, I immediately know, okay now stop, release. This can be anything, so a musical phrasing point can be a good resting point, but it's also a good one where only one of your hands are playing. So let's say you have a part where only... And you can, you can do whatever you want. So you just release the tension or I don't know. anything okay so you don't have to release the tension in both hands at the same time not necessarily yeah that feels the best <laughs> that's the most simple simple way to release but but you can find another way with this idea and with this technique you really learn how to organize your energy through the whole piece because you you need energy from one pillow to another pillow and that's it it's it's really good i i recommend it give it a try you'll see but yeah this is my pro tip uh, i've been using this technique for years and i i can't even describe how how much my playing improved since i i'm practicing like this so these are my tips on how to reduce stress in your hands while you play the classical guitar. And if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, and if you think it's useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe on the channel, so the YouTube algorithm will recommend this video for more and more people. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can support me on Patreon and you would become a super cool person. I also go live on Reddit and on Twitch regularly, check out my schedule, I will put everything in the description below. And yeah, that's pretty much everything, so thank you for watching and see you next time!